Welcome to my homeschool hub. Today I'm talking with Sharon Weichel and Angela Shelley, and we're going to be talking about favorite English curriculum. Uh, this can be grammar or writing or reading or anything that fits under that very ginormous umbrella of English. That's yeah. a big one, right? <laughs> Sharon, what did you bring to the table today? Oh, we have used so many different things over the years and, and haven't really stuck with uh, up until later years, uh, a more consistent program. At first, for the little guys, this was something that it's not necessarily a curriculum, but it's a book. And it's a cool book. It's called First Language Lessons. And how we used this was kind of fun. And we kind of came up with it on our own. But it was really fun for me and really fun for the kids. They would go through different, different topics, proper nouns, nouns, noun review, all the parts of speech. Uh, seasons, different thing, adjectives, I mean, all, all different kinds of things. Dictation, I really, uh, I think in, in dictation is, is an important thing. Prepositions, so all these kind of different things. But they have, they're just one page little lessons. What they would do, they have kind of a little instruction for the instructor, and then it would have a, an activity type of thing. And what we did with it, which was so fun, and we did this with several of our classes, history, English, but we made flat books. And so flat books are, are just, we just love them. And so this one was, was in regards to this book and it just talked about like they would have poems. So you would go through, read a poem. And so we would go ahead and write something about a poem. Like this one was like the, the tortoise and the hare. So there's a picture and, or Aesop's fables, you know, so we would do that. And then in the midst of that, learn you know what the nouns were what the verbs were and according to the book and according to the lesson put that all together in a book this was my last son he's got it when he was seven here so poems the hearts are like doors here so there that was one of the poems and we made a little thing for that and 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 all the kids of course it's nothing none, none of them are the same which just makes it really fun too because then we have a presentation day and we would go ahead and present these to either the older kids in the class or families or whatever. But they would just uh, have all kinds of different things. Here's another poem about the caterpillar. And it was, you know, talking about different things, whatever it would pertain to. The maps of the U.S., you know, proper nouns and specific as a person, place, or thing. So then they were talking about specific things, adjectives, describes. And we had a tent, so he made a tent. And so you could, you get the idea. But it was real simple to go through this because it was just short and it was very basic. So that was kind of fun. So that was one thing we did for, I think Simon was seven when we did that. And, and there was several kids around that age. We've, we've done a flat book idea for so many different subjects and it really, it really just pulls things together. So that was a really a fun time. What age would you say that first language lessons books would go up to? Uh, this one, what does it say? I mean, it, it is younger, maybe like fourth grade, fifth grade, something like that. I don't know if it is specifically for each one. I would say that that's probably about right. And you could probably make it more difficult for older kids or add more to it if you wanted to. Again, it was just a, a, good, a good guideline. It was kind of a really fun guideline. So it was, it was good. For that for that season that sounds great we did also when the kids got older there's all kinds of things that we did just to engage we loved we loved read alouds so we just would read at lunchtime we'd read every book for an hour and that was just so fun one of the things for writing was the IEW by Andrew Pudwa that came with videos and different stages of course they had an A B and C type of program which obviously the A was the beginner and went through how to write how to set up your a paper or reinforce different learning styles, your verbs, your, you know, you have a checklist for your writing, taught, taught you how to write, you know, what is a good sentence. We, they would work on good sentences. And, and he has a video for every, every lesson. And he is just great for including boys, especially because he is kind of comical. And so for boys, it, it, they have a tendency to be a little bit more reluctant writers. And he's just great with it, including the kids and, and making it kind of funny. And, and so they, they would catch that on really quick. And my youngest son, we did that more with him. And as of this last, let's see, about a year ago or whatever, we did, we did the 12-page the research paper. And then he was writing, he did the dual enrollment classes and was writing papers in college papers. And which was, this was a great, great foundation for him. 
and uh, to learn how to put those sentences together and then how to make sure that every paragraph included good writing, uh, good writing styles, good words, uh, vibrant words. So they had colorful words. You'd have colorful words. You'd have active nouns. And they would really go through the paragraphs. Every paragraph and have a checklist is what he has to make sure that you're putting all that in every paragraph. And, it, and of course, it gets more complicated and adds more things as you as you go on, which we did in uh, two years ago, we did a, a research paper and that was a 12 page plus research paper. you learning all the styles and the APA or you know MLA and all that kind of stuff. It's a great foundation, the great stepping stone for preparing your kids for high school writing, for sure. Yeah, that's so important to teach them how to write. Mm -hmm. It's huge. That was, that was helpful. And with that, they have programs that aren't, aren't by, the, by Andrew Puda necessarily, but it is his excellence in writing, but they have make it fun for the kids along the way, the younger kids and the older kids. They have Narnia, rockets, robotics. Here's the American Lit, and it's kind of goes along with that same program. So when you get into high school, you have your American literature program, which also includes obviously a lot of reading, but then you're also, he's incorporating the writing that he's taught you over the years and creating excellence with that, with resources and or videos and different things like that. So it's a great program and it's it's pretty inclusive and it really felt like we got good results with that. So can I ask a question on that? The the American literature specifically that you just showed, that looks like mm -hmm. it would be something, and I think you said good for high school. Uh -huh. If if a student hasn't gone through the teaching with structure and style, TSS, if they haven't gone through levels A, B, and C and done all that, could a high school student still jump in and use that curriculum or should people stay away from that if they haven't gone through all the previous sessions? No, I, I think that they could. Obviously, he has a system. If they've been taught writing, I think you could catch on with this because it, it's, it's primarily reading in the literature. And then, of course, you're using instructions in it to write your, your papers about, about Hawthorne or about you know, any of the Cooper, whatever, whatever the Rip Van Winkles, like the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. There's a lot of reading in there. And then it, but it does, it does touch on some of that, but I don't think it's absolutely necessary, but I think it would be helpful. And obviously it teaches about the MLA format. And if you're touching on that in another curriculum, I think you could pull that off. There's some buy-in to it, of course. I think that it would make it a little bit easier, but I don't know if it would be strictly, like I would have, wouldn't necessarily avoid it. He gives all those same checklists in that older curriculum too. Yes. Uh huh. I mean, you can you can definitely apply them. They do. They have a lot. They do have. Some yeah. I'll here. say just really quickly that we actually did IEW in our co-op that that I helped start, and the the teacher that was you know had been doing IEW for years. They actually had a lot of students that would just come in, you know, ninth grade, tenth grade, and had never done IEW. Right. He would give them all of the checklists and all of the basic stuff. And then by the time a few weeks had gone by, they were, they were already very proficient in how to mark up a right. paragraph. Because if right. you know the basic grammar, noun, pronoun, verb, right. you know, all those things, you're, all you're learning is how to mark it. You already mm -hmm. know the, the grammar. Now you're just learning how to mark it and then how to pull things out of it and, and write it in a way that they teach through IW. I did bring, and this was fun for the little kids too, and it does go into, it does go into high school. They have the gold book and the, the bronze book, is it broad book, maybe the gold and the gray book. I'm not sure exactly all the levels, but they have one for each, each grade. And this was fun because it, it, it was all inclusive and it was, it's a learning language through literature. So they would give you a book. They would have, have you be looking at, let's say this one's Mr. Popper's Penguins. And in that, they would go ahead and go through the book. They would give you an excerpt of that, of that book to read with the kids. And then they would have you pick it apart. And there would be dictation. There would be ways you'd write. There would, be, there would even be some, like this one even has a geography as far as where the penguins were. So it's kind of inclusive. Not totally. I mean, you know, not, not, it doesn't cover everything that you would need to know. But but for like your language, your language arts and your literature. So what I would do is that I would make time and stretch out a lesson and read the whole book. So sometimes they would, that what they would do is they wouldn't maybe give you the whole book to read, but I would stretch that out and use the whole book and use it as that, as that literature. And then you would go ahead and, you know, you could, they have spelling in it, just talking about 
so many different aspects of literature and language, your punctuation, your spelling, your grammar, all that kind of stuff. And, and so that we liked those, that a, a lot too, because it was including reading and, and also making that kind of fun. The, you said that goes all the way through high school? Mm -hmm. Have you used the high school for any of your kids? I did. I have. I did. And we didn't use them necessarily solely for like, we did British Lit and um, American Lit with those. Um, we used them as guidelines and picked things, you know, picked them apart and kind of put things together, things that were useful, things that may not been. Um, so there was a lot of, you would read the book and a lot of discussion more so than obviously you're learning about pronouns or whatever. And then you would write, you would do some writing along with that. So but it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily concentrated on the techniques of writing, but more so on the concept of what you were trying to get across in a, you know, about what they were asking uh, your, you know, the paper would be about or the topic of the, of the paper. So, so the, not, not a lot of the technique as far as language technique, but a lot of conversation and a lot of discussion. It worked out pretty well, but I really liked it for the younger grades more so. Great. Thank you. What did yeah. you bring today, Angela? English is a little bit of a touchy subject for our family because my oldest uh, has ADHD and then my two oldest have uh, dyslexia. So that has been a journey for us. <laughs> English has just been a, not the easiest thing for us. But so I have a ton of, of options. One thing that we found really worked well for us in the beginning is this Fast Phonics by Renee Ellison. And she does these little pictures of, so like for a bee, she has a little like wheels for a baby buggy. And then she has the baby here. And if the baby buggy handle comes first, then it's a bee. And then here you have a D, you have a doggy door face and the doggy door is going into the door. So if you have the doggy door face first, then it's a D. So it's, and it's how you're reading, right? So that for dyslexic kids, this was a really, a really good book. And it comes with a bigger book that has, let's see, it has like when you're learning certain letters, what you should do in the, in that situation. And then the smaller book is just the alphabet. And then it has a little saying like this T one is Tom talks tons. And then it has a, a guy with a mouth like this and he's talking a lot. So he, it, and it comes a little story too. So you can tell the story and they learn their letters based off of the pictures that are drawn on top of them. There's been a lot of studies showing like that left, right brain connection that if you have dyslexic children or you have children that have trouble with learning letters or numbers, that if you draw pictures on them, that they actually retain that information better. Or if you tell a story with it, that they retain that, that letter or that number more. So that was really helpful. In spelling, well actually let me back up. In pre-K, we tend to just do like arts and crafts and then the letters and the colors and things like that. And I usually use the ABECA arts and crafts and the ABECA letters and number and just the pages. And I just get them loose leaf and I pass them out as the kids want to do something because they're so young and their attention span is so little that it's it's easy to pass it out when they're ready for it and to keep it when they're not. So that's kind of how I do the the little 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 ones. And then we switch over to BJU for for English and reading from like kindergarten. This is the kindergarten book through about sixth grade. And then this next year, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. My kids, my older kids are just kind of done with worksheets. So we've used the story of the world for history before. We're on the second book now. We just started kind of going through that. And in their activities section, they have recipes for food. They have the time period that they're talking about, or their story that you're talking about, or the country that you're talking about. And they have like activities and things you can build. Sometimes you can build like a sword or, you know, and, like the boys really like that. Like when you're, you know, talking about a war and you can build a sword and, and a shield and you can fight with it and stuff. This is a lot of like, there's a lot of hands-on activity options with these. So we're actually going to take this history program and we're going to incorporate grammar and writing and reading. And I'll, I will pick out some books that pertain to whatever it is we're learning in history 
so that it's either like historical fiction books or, or maybe nonfiction books or something of that time period or of that country that we can then read and they can write maybe a book report on and we can kind of incorporate our reading and our writing and our grammar in history this year. And it also make it a little bit easier for me because I now have my fourth child entering real school and I have to spend a little bit more time with him. And so the two little ones that are in first grade and kindergarten, they require a lot of mom time where I'm sitting down and I'm teaching them their letters and their numbers. And that's just a lot of, a lot of mom time. <laughs> so for the older ones, if I can incorporate multiple classes, what I do is I'll print out like the scope and sequence or what does my child need to know by the end of blah grade. And then I will make sure that they have all of those checks by the end of the year. When I give the assignments out, I give them based off of their grade level. So my oldest will have more things that she will have to do in her writing and her grammar and things like that than the youngest, but I can do all of them together. And so that's really like that cuts down on the time that I have to spend one-on-one -on -one with the kids since we already do a math where it's a lot like really mom focused and centered. So I have to spend a lot of time doing that. But so that's going to be our new program for this year. We have used this Fix It Grammar, which is an IEW program. We've used this in the past. And this one is, this one's the first one. It is the nose tree, but they have, this is like a fable, a, a fairy tale. And then they also have like, this one's the second one. It's Robin Hood. And they have the frog prince is the third one. And the fourth one is the little mermaid. And what they do is you, you write down a sentence on, uh, write down a sentence on the board and we break the sentence apart and we tell what's the nouns, the verbs, the adverbs, adjectives, all of those things. And then once we're done with that and we correct any problems in the sentence, then they have a journal that they write down the sentence that we did that day. And by the end of the year, they have the entire story of Little Mermaid or Robin Hood or whatever it is that we're doing that year. They have it completely written down and it's all correct. So that's kind of neat. They really enjoy kind of looking back on that when they're done with it. For spelling, we have had a ton of, a ton of curriculum because spelling has been a problem in our, in our house. I started with I think BJU, it was a little too straightforward for my kids. They needed a little bit more help. But then we went to All About Spelling, and that was super helpful because it actually has like magnetized manipulatives of letters that you can move around. I ended up doing on one of my walls, I did like a magnetized wall, and then I put whiteboard paint over the top of it so they can actually stick the magnets on the wall and then they can move them around to make letters and things like that I mean make words so that was helpful for like first through third grade and then once they passed third or fourth grade then we switched to spelling power and spelling power is good because it, you can take this all the way through high school and it's just one book for everybody and anytime I can do one book for everybody that's the way <laughs> that's the way I'm gonna go so you, they take an assessment and there's different assessments in the book that you can give them. And basically you wait until they get three or four words wrong and then you stop and you figure out where they are on the list of words and it correlates to where they need to start in the book. So you can actually start this at any grade level. You just find out where they belong in, in the list and then you start them on that list. And then they have, they have, let's see, this, the, the lists are here and they're so little, you can't really tell, but like each of the big headings right here, this is a new list. So this is a list, this is a list, and they just go from one to the next to the next and that's their, that's their program. And then they have like review tests and if they get the review tests good, you just keep, keep going. And then, like I said, you can take this all the way through really, really hard words. <laughs> 
Some are there guys. worksheets in that or does the whole book like that look like that and you like write it down for them or print type it up for them at the beginning of each week or how often yeah. do you do so this? Yeah, so the whole book looks like this. I actually have them take this book. I've marked where they, where each of them are in the book so they know what color their uh, paper clip is and they just go to their color and they know what number they're on and they write their spelling words. Now, Spelling Power also has specific journals, but they're, they're just blank pages with the spelling power lists where you can write down your words and then whatever words you get wrong, you take those words and then you write them like three or four times. And then I usually just give them a few days, like three or four days to learn their list of words. And then we have a test. And then if they, they pass it, we go on to the next one. If they don't pass it, they have three or more, three or four more days to learn that list again. So that's been, that's worked really well for us because they can just kind of do it at their own pace. It's not like, oh, you're in this grade or you're in that grade with spelling because spelling is it's not our strong suit. <laughs> but with dyslexia, it's really hard. Spelling yeah. can be tough with dyslexia. Yeah, for sure. We have, yeah, we have a program that we just recently found a couple of years ago that's kind of fun and it makes it really fun. It's called Marie's Words. And so- Oh, we have is, that. Yeah, they're really yes. fun, especially, especially for older kids too, just when they start learning ACT words, SAT words, that type of stuff of vocabulary. So what this is, is and they, they're punched, you can put them on a binder and, and, and just make it handy. Like this one is plethora, so it looks like thorns. The letters are kind of written with spikies on them. And then the Thor kind of reminds you of a rose, so it's giving you a picture in your head of what that, yep. of what that word is. And then obviously it's accentuating the Thor. And then on the back, it tells you the pronunciation, the definition and a sentence, the synonyms, the antonyms. So we've used these and it comes with, I don't know how many is in here. A ton. Uh, Our kids have loved those and it's been great yeah, for they're, vocabulary. They're great. And we just add them to whatever we're doing. So that's kind of, we just kind of, okay, you do it for 15 minutes a day or 10 minutes a day or whatever. And it adds to it and, or, or will you have to use so many Marie's words or whatever this week in a, in a, in a, in a paragraph or a story or something like that. So it's really easy to learn harder words or even, I don't know if there's real simple words in here, but no, they're, they're they, they range from average to, I mean, they're not real simple, but so it, I would say it's like junior high and high school, something like that. Yeah, and we actually if, started that in first grade. Oh, you did really? Okay, good for you. I didn't find them that early. They weren't around then <laughs> for me. They probably memorized at least half of them. I can hold up the, the, yeah. the picture and without them even seeing the word, they'll right. they'll know what it is, what the definition is, like everything. Right. It's, it, those yeah. are great. Those are great. And, great. Then, and, and then sometimes we'd have them make, we would have them make their own. So that was kind yeah. of fun. So then, okay, you have any words here that you maybe haven't seen before. You make your own card. And so that was kind of fun to see what they came up with picture. And that was kind of fun as well. And what are those called again, please? It's called, called Marie's words. So it's. Wow. That's a big box, box of words. How much do you think that costs? Do you remember what yeah, you paid for I want to say, I want to say like 30 bucks. Yeah. It wasn't very expensive at all. That was a fun find. That's great. Yeah. Those have been great. Do mm -hmm. you have anything else you wanted to bring to the table today, Angela? Or is that all you have? That's all I have for today. I've, I've seen and learned a lot from both of you today, things I hadn't seen or been aware of before. Now I'm rethinking if I, that's bad. I'm rethinking what I'm going to do this year. Like, Ooh, do I want to add that? <laughs> it's not always great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming today and thanks for sharing all of your curriculum. I'm, I'm excited to uh, share this with the world and I hope it helps a lot of people figure out what they want to do. Thanks for everything. Have a great day. Would you like to work one-on-one -on -one with either Sharon or Angela? If you want to, just go to myhomeschoolhub.com and click on Mentor Moms where you can sign up to partner with them for your homeschool journey. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel.